Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Global Space Program 1.12. In this video I'm going to test the Kasei rocket with Orion carrier planes as boosters. The Kasei rocket I recently featured in a video. It is a Hydrolox core with five very powerful engines at the bottom of 4,000 kilonewtons. And we also have one of those engines in a vacuum form with a really big nozzle on the second stage. And the Orion carrier planes have nine engines each. They burn methane and oxygen, and they burn them at, uh, well, let me just show you the figures. Uh, the maximum thrust is 2,346 kilonewtons, so uh, about a Raptor engine thrust, but heavier. And they have less chamber pressure, and they get less ISP overall. Uh, 322 at sea level, 358 in vacuum. Though they're a little bit, I think, more vacuum optimized than a Raptor engine is. But the goal was to make them simpler and uh, not have as much chamber pressure uh, so that there's less wear and tear. So, yeah. Uh, we had the room on the back of the Orion carrier planes in order to do that. Typically, the Orion carrier plane is used on its own and has a payload on the back of it and it acts as the first stage. Here, we're strapping it to the side of the Kasei rocket. I think I've used this arrangement in uh, some series, uh, probably solar system tourism, where I normally try things out, but we haven't really tested the capacity of it, I don't think, and more particularly, we haven't tested whether, when we use this arrangement, the Orion carrier plane could potentially get to its landing spot in the Bahamas when we launch out of Tampico which requires the Orion carrier plane to be going at 4,000 meters per second. So we are going to see whether the Kasei rocket can get it to go that fast, because when we strapped them to SLS, they couldn't go that fast. They didn't get anywhere near that speed. Now the Kasei rocket is more powerful on launch than the SLS, and it also will do more of the work in order to get to orbit. One problem is that the core only lasts 8.6 seconds longer than the boosters. So let's take it outside and see how it goes. We have eight, 185 tons on it, so the goal is to low Earth orbit 185 tons. One downside to Kasei compared to the SLS core is that it's got a really heavy upper stage. So the heavy upper stage will actually limit our ability to get to that 4,000 meters per second. Uh, I've oriented it for the flame trench. We've recently discovered that flame trenches uh, might be important, so I've taken the liberty of making sure it's oriented right. But that does mean we're going to have to roll during flight. So, uh, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. Uh, maybe I released the flaps a little bit early there. The Rex engines do spool up pretty quickly, but probably the ED-9s don't. Now, to go to the Bahamas, we have to go to a heading of 78. Oh, uh, well, there's the roll. <laughs> that happened more quickly than I wanted it to, but okay. The benefit of this arrangement is, of course, that the boosters are recoverable if we can get them to the right speed. The downside is they would be way more expensive than the regular SLS boosters, the five segment boosters, but they are more efficient. With the SLS boosters, the Kasei rocket can get 150 tons to low Earth orbit. With these, we're trying for 185. The Orion carrier planes also have to be at an apoapsis of about 180 kilometers when we release them. Okay, well, we don't have enough this time, but I think I could have probably optimized our trajectory a little bit. We, uh, we needed to turn a little bit more aggressively, so I'm gonna do that. Oops, I keep forgetting that that's not working. Alright, let me try to turn more aggressively and see if we can make it, or we could reduce the payload on it, and then that'll help. But let me just try a better trajectory first. It is nearly 4,000 tons on the pad, so it's much, much heavier than SLS's, and uh, approaching but not quite at uh, super heavy levels. So, ignition. And launch. Okay, hopefully not too shallow here. We're past max Q by now. So obviously, 
this arrangement will probably show up in the To Mars and Beyond series since we are using the Orion carry plane and the Kasei rocket there. Okay, well, I let the thrust weight ratio go a little bit high there, but... Okay, it looks good this time. Okay, and switching off those and separating them at 4,000 meters per second. Uh, let's follow one of them. We can do the launch bit later. I mean, the getting it to orbit bit later. We're on a trajectory like this. Right now we would be falling short, but... Uh, way short, actually, at the Florida Keys. But we do bounce up off of the atmosphere, so... Okay, we are flat now. Still a long ways away from the Bahamas. Coming down real fast. Twelve G's it looks like. And we're going up again. Is it enough? I fitted jet engines on this from time to time. And I may consider doing that again. So that is not a bad bounce so far. Okay. Well, we can't even hold the pitch anymore, so let's not ask it to. We can see the Bahamas. I think I will switch to atmospheric autopilot now. I'll start some engines to see what we can get out of them. Might as well. Oh, we have to sell the fuel down. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that. That's always been a problem at this phase. I keep forgetting to add extra RCS thrusters to this. I thought I had more. Certainly I wouldn't have only put, like, one right up there or possibly two. There should be some on the side. Maybe I just can't see them. There seems to be a light there. But I think we might make it. I mean, we certainly have the island in sight and everything. And of course we went the right speed and the right height, so there's no reason why we shouldn't. Uh, well, I'm not getting the fuel, so... Oh, there they go. It's losing hope right there, but... All right, let's just exhaust them. I should have probably pitched up more. I didn't expect them to come on. Gotta dump the rest of the propellant. Oh, well, here we go again. I always do something wrong right when we're trying to land. Well, I don't think I'm gonna get it to the runway, but at least we'll land on the island. I think it was just a matter of when the engines came on, I should have pitched up so that we wouldn't lose speed so quickly. Well, I think I'll just land on the standard ground instead of my special terrain over there. Yeah, the problem I usually get into is this plane doesn't particularly like to maneuver at really low speeds, so best to keep it flying straight anyway. a little bit jittery there on the controls. This is atmospheric autopilot, so. Being close to the stall, potentially. And sitting down. There are drag chutes on here, but I think we can stop. Okay, so that's recoverable. And... Actually, in terms of location, if I had just initially had uh, turned a little bit further there uh, on the final leg down, we could probably have made the runway there. But then we have to make that drastic final turn. Um, uh, we, yeah. Anyway, but yes, so that part works. Now let's try and launch the 185 tons to orbit. Okay, SAS on, throttle up. And ignition. And launch. 
launch. Okay, everything looking good here. Okay, a little bit slower than last time. Separation. Okay, separation of stage, separation of fairings, and ignition. Oh yeah, I think we can carry more than this. We can go back to 90 degrees now. We'll see how much extra we have and then uh, judge by that in the VAB. It's not precise, but, but then if we add more payload, then the Orion carrier planes might not get to where they need to go, so we do have to consider that. Okay, getting close to orbit as we pass just south of Florida here. Okay, and that's good enough. Uh, so we have 445 meters per second left. So, assuming that it wouldn't cause any problems for the Orion carrier plane, we'll see how much that might get us. Uh, All together in orbit right now, we're 240 tons, which means what we have remaining here is 65 tons. And then we have the... Let me just see what the dry mass of the stage is. That's interesting. I haven't reviewed the dry mass of it in a while. It's about uh, 30 tons, which, yeah, I mean, I can see that. So I guess it's not too weird. I mean, 30 tons, I think it's like 300 tons fuel or something like that. So, yeah, 300 tons of fuel and then the dry mass is 30 tons. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's reasonable with the engine there, of course. So the tank itself is like uh, 23 tons or something like that. I think you could easily come up with a procedural tank that's lighter than that. Uh, plus, of course, the decoupler here, or adapter. But yeah, so we had 400 extra, which means maybe we could get 200 and let's say 210 tons. So I don't think about that, but in that case, probably we'll have to fit jet engines on the Orion carrier planes and that will knock it down a bit. So anyway, that was a test of the Kasei rocket with the Orion carrier planes. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.